Hey everybody, so I'm trying to do a different angle on the camera and get you a little bit more viewing area, but today, have you ever had so many cutoffs that you need to do something with them? And this is just a short stack of my cutoffs. I love this one. It's iridized. Um, and... I mean, they've been in the pile for so long. That's kind of cool. Sort of see-through. Um, but they've been in the pile, and they need to get used up. So, I am going to go through, find what might work for kind of an abstract circle design just to do a sculpture. Um... I don't think I'm going to make it a bowl or anything, uh, but I've got some really interesting choices. <laughs> I've got one dragonfly that I'm not sure how he ended up all by himself over here, but he is. Um, but I'm going to try and go through what we've got going on here and come up with the glass talking to me, basically. Let's see, that just looks like some Tecta. Pretty sure that is, too. I do have more colors and smaller pieces that I need to go through also. So, I'm going to sort out the Tectas and try and let the glass talk to me a little bit. This looks like a brown. Yeah. So, let me pull this over. This is one of the other, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, and right now the camera's too tall for me to tell. Anyhow, this is another one I need to go through. Um, pieces I had cut out in the past, and this guy, <laughs> I love doing this. This was using, um, oh, I'll think of his name, but it's the, the flowing technique. I've got his book, uh, but it, it was an idea that I did in a cross, which worked out really well. It's cute. Um, but I had put hangers on the back with acrylic tubing, and you could see them. And I didn't like that you could see them through the front. That would have been great if this was more opaque. So here's my thought was, I got this part off. There's a little tiny bit down here of the acrylic tubing that the glue just would not release. So I figure if I can cut that out, all this glass can be used and it's so pretty the way it came out that why not put in an abstract piece, right? And I hope I was on camera for that. So anyhow, this is going to be a... This is a dragonfly that I was so upset. He, he just broke. He didn't work. Um, but this will be one of the scrap busters. I don't know if y'all do this or not, but when I get too much scrap going on, I have to let the glass talk to me and tell me what it wants to become. This is one of my favorite pieces. I love, it's so dusty. Um, I love this when I can get it. It's red and orange and purple and blue. It's so pretty. So. Anyway, let me um, sort through and try and come up with a, a brain cloud of an idea and wash off some of this glass. And then I will be back with you to talk about putting it together. Okay, well, uh, sorry. 
I put you up higher, so I ended up having to step on a step stool to turn the camera on and off. Um, I think I'm going to go with blues. Uh, I was going through my cutoff piles, and I have tons of the scraps like this. And I hate calling them scraps because they're just as good as the regular glass. They're just cutoffs. So what I'm going to do here, I think, is I am going to do an abstract. I had made this little booger a while ago with dichroic and a clear. And it kind of came out a little bit wonky. But I figured someday I would be able to use it, and today is that day. So, while I'm looking at this, I'm thinking it's random, it's haphazard, it's kind of arty. Um, I'm not sure I like just doing wild and weird shapes like this, and some of these I'm going to have to trim down. Um because I don't think they fit like this one um, and this straight one. We've got so many curvy pieces that I really don't think I want to have totally straight pieces. Um, and I have some other blues that I can add into this. But the thought process is I'm going to make just a wild blue interesting something but it's going to be a sculpture that stands in a um, in a stand for lack of a better word and that one's got a little silver on it I'm going to have to get that off since I learned my silver lesson um, but I'm going to take my nippers here and try to Take these straighter pieces and give them some curve. And I like to do abstract. Um, I know some people don't like it at all. Some people do. I thought about um, spreading these out into like a a flowery pattern but then I got to thinking about it and I thought eh, I don't I don't know if I want to do that I like this one because it's got some of the raw edge uh, so anyhow I mean tell me what you guys like to do with your abstracts I'm going to probably put owl put glass on my finger <laughs> I'm probably going to sprinkle powder on this and I don't know if it's going to be clear powder or if I am going to do like a complementary color oh, little suckers just want to fly this one has some irid to it so I want to ear it up all right, I'm not sure. Hello? I'm not sure where that one went. So we are going to find it in a minute. In the meantime, I'm going to break up this irid piece. It is blue. Whoop. Now I'm sending all kinds of pieces flying over the edge. Please disregard my nasty little wintry dry fingers. Here we go. Some of these I have an idea where I want to put them. Some of them are just randomly placed. But I'm thinking it would be kind of cool to put a, um, a complementary color powder, like a yellow or an 
orange or something transparent and, but yet dynamic. Um, I love this royal blue. I'm gonna pop it some back. Pop it some back. I'm talking funny today. I'm gonna snip it <laughs> so I'm not chasing them all over the place. And I may look in the scrap bin for more itty bitty pieces. This one was actually, I don't know if you can see that, it was really kind of fun. It was from a um, uh, pot melt. So I'm going to look at the camera and see if you could see that. So the pot melt put out the, um, the drip, you know. And so I cut the drip off because it has like a vitrograph kind of thing to it. Oh, back off the step stool. I pulled a muscle the other day and I thought I was getting away with it because it didn't hurt that bad. Today, it hurts. I want a little bit more of this in here because it's pretty. And I think having the various colors of blue I do have a couple, the powdery blue is like an opaque, but most of this is transparent. And the reason I like to do these kinds of projects is I think that it gives you like a brain um, that's funny, that's not the color that I dropped. It gives you like a little bit of a brain, um, jump start to thinking about new patterns and new ideas and to coming up with Oh, come on. There we go. To coming up with um, well just new ideas like I was saying um, new thoughts new colors I have ouch I have ouch um, doing it in your hand like that you get little glass shards and you have to be careful so you know what I could do? I have my handy dandy milk jug that I made to catch. Um, let me get the. So let's see. Hopefully this is on camera. If I'll put it right there. So. Much easier than trying to catch it in your hand. And I'm sure it's safer too. So I'm going to stack a few of these up to give a variety to the colors and the shapes. And I think I have enough gap space here that it's not going to disturb my spread. You know, I think it's going to give me a, um, a more organic-y feel. If organic -y is a word, I keep making up words. I'm very good at that. Um, so... I think maybe I need a tiny bit more. Which color do I want to use? More of this? 
more of the dark cobalty color. I really like that. But I think I need something. You know what? Here's another way that you can save on scraps. I did this dragonfly. And of course, he cracked. Um, and it would have been such a cool dragonfly too. Look how beautiful that is. But he cracked and if you see there the um the uh mold actually got stuck in his wing too but let's use him i have to be careful because the wing mold problem but i can break off Parts that I can use that I don't have. Mold stuck in them. See, I can't really use that because there is some uh, mold stuck in there. And I could probably, let me do this into the trash can here. So I got that little piece off there so that I can get that off. Glass is just too expensive, y'all. I mean, you got to use what you can use. If money were no object, oops, that one missed the trash can and went onto the floor over there. Um... If money were no object, then yeah, you could just say, oh, well, this didn't work and throw it away. But glass is a reusable medium. I got that whole section off there. Um, and that's one of the things I love about it is if something should not come out the way that you wanted it to, it's not trash. It's it's not gone forever. Um, it's not money down the drain. It can be... I need to get that off. It can be um, used again. And I think in our economy now, we have to remember that and we have to uh, recycle, recycle our mistakes, salvage what we can. And that gave me quite a bit of glass. I mean, I had to... Uh, Cut some of it out, obviously. But, look how much it gave me. And I think when you can recycle and make more beautiful things, or make... I'm just randomly piling it up a little. I am going to full fuse this. Um, I like to keep texture, so I like to contour fuse quite a bit, but this one I think is going to require a full fuse. And that's a neat clump there, but uh, let's see. I wish I had a little bit more like that turquoise aqua color. I'll have to look at my scrap bin because that's a nice light color. I'm talking about this right here. It's um it's like an aqua. 
And I think I, I went through here pretty darn good the other day. And got all my blues. You know what? Here's some clear. So I would ask you, what do you think? Should I put, um... Uh... Clear powder on here, or should I put a contrast? I think I'm gonna I'm gonna pause you and go look at my powders and see what I have. This one, <laughs> I think this is the only piece in here too. It is the um, yeah. There's another piece over there. We're gonna break this up a little bit though. It is the. Uh, Oh, look at that handwriting. I did not see that until I picked it up again. Let's pull them out of there. Because it had some silver on it. Silver Sharpie. Where it was identified. So let's pull that out and... I will do some of this cobalt to fill in those gaps. I'm wondering if I do uh, if I did like a yellow powder over the blue, is it going to give me greens? Which it very well may. <laughs> If I do orange, what's it going to give me? Because orange and blue kind of makes a brownish color, doesn't it? Um, so I may have to go with clear. Just to preserve the blue. Because I don't want... I don't want a funky brown mess, you know? I don't think anybody wants a funky brown mess. You know, me and my dichro flakes, that would look kind of cool in here too, is to have some dichro, but... Um, I'm not sure I'm willing to do that much dichro on here. So, we're going to go with this. We're going to see what it comes out like. And this one's just driving me nuts. It's a little bit too big. I don't mind it being somewhat larger, but to me it just seemed a little bit big for there. And you know, actually, I'm, I'm kind of contemplating a number of things here. I'm contemplating not putting the powder on. I'm contemplating... Um, see, this has irid in it. I could break this up. And put it in there for some irid, or I could just put some clear on here. Um, I think there's enough on top that it's not going to pull in at all. But if I put a little bit of clear, we have some more of this. this. Uh, I was tapping off screen, sorry. Um, oh, my brain hurts today. I really wish I had more of that. 
let me pause you and see if I don't have some more of this um, green aqua turquoise -y looking color. Pause. It is so crazy the amount of cutoff I have. Look at this box. I am not even sure. My guess. Oh, look. Is this it? Aquamarine blue. Oh, look. We do have some. Do I have any smaller bits of it? Crash. I'm like Captain Destructo today. I should probably be doing something sitting down. Okay, so... This is that color... And I mean, that's a nice piece. I mean, this is a piece I could do something with. But I do want a little bit more of this color in this project. So, <laughs> if y'all could only see my table right now. Um, I don't think you can see the whole thing. <laughs> I'll take the camera down and I'll show you. Because I was like, if I just slice off a tiny bit, I can, you know, I can use that. But let me, let me show you this because... Oh, I have been working on, well, you can see some of it over here, but I have been working on going through all my cutoffs that my whole table is basically covered in cutoffs. So, I need to make room to cut a little piece of this off. Cut off, ha ha. Um... Let me put some of this in the next box that I'll go through for idea and inspiration. And I'll put some in here, which I'd already sorted through that, but, um, and then I had all this beautiful pink, um, Let me put this gorgeous green, which honestly I thought this whole project was going to be green until I found that. And then I'm like, that was my inspiration to do the wonky eyeball. We might call this Hey Blue Eye. <laughs> I actually found this one too. But I noticed it has... It has some weird stuff in the dichroic when it fired, and I'm not sure what it is. But now I have room to cut off a tiny piece of this. So let's go with, um, let's go with about this much. Just chop, chop, chop it up. You know, I love all things glass, and I think you all know I do stained glass too. Um, but I get more requests for fused glass videos. So, um... The next thing I want to try, and the whole reason that I started going through my cutoffs, is I really want to try mosaic um, for a number of reasons. I think it's beautiful. Uh, I think it's a great use of cutoffs. I know I see people that, um, you know, sell their cutoffs to mosaic artists. And actually, I had met a lady out of uh, Hudson, North Carolina, down by Hickory. 
Lenore. And she had offered me her cutoffs because she was stained glass and she knew I was fused glass. But the problem was is I didn't know the COE on her stained glass. And at the time, I was still in the process of caring for my parents, so there was not a ton of experimenting time and playing around time available in my life. Uh, and so I declined on it, which now I kind of wish I wouldn't have, but I have plenty of cutoffs myself, as you can tell. So, I like it much better with some more of that aqua in it. I'm going to fire this on a full fuse, and I will be back with you when it is finished. Y'all, I have got to get my brain functioning again. I, um... Forgot to put thin fire under it, so I got bubbles. Darn it. Because it actually came out pretty cool looking. However, with the um, thin fire not being there, I had no way for air to be released underneath. Which is why you should always put thin fire over or under a... Um, flat object. Now, what I will probably do about this for salvage purposes, um, they're pretty thick. They're thick bubbles. But I think what I'm going to do is come up with a filler create some method of filling it. I've still got plenty of blue scrap left. And I can cut off some uh, pieces. Boy, those are really thick, thick bubbles. So. Anyway. Bomber on this one. I will probably do a short video when I fix it. Use your thin fire, people, boy, and use your brain, <laughs> because mine is shot. Well, it is a rainy Saturday, but this looks a little bit better today with the papyrus paper underneath it. We'll clean it up. We can still see where the bubbles were. Oops. But it is filled in. So we'll do the cleanup in a little bit and the final review. Okay, well, even though the chemo brain seemed to kick in on me on the first firing where I ended up with the bubbles for not using. Um, thin fire or papyrus to let the air escape. The repair job did pretty good. Um, it's definitely an abstract piece. I'm not sure if I'm that fond of it. So I'm going to have to think about whether or not this is going to be for sale or if I'm going to use it. Maybe slice it up like a pizza and come up with a different pattern. So, stay tuned, but in the meantime, here's one way to use up some of your cutoffs.